And we only have a tiny bit left of this, the 13th chapter of The Eyes of the Killer Robot left to go. Johnny has had something put on the lenses of his glasses and is now stepping into the office of a brand new eye doctor that his grandmother has used, Dr. Amelia Pimlico. Something sinister is definitely going on. Johnny walked into a cheerful sunlit office decorated with lovely, cool with a lovely cool green oriental rug and off-white walls. Near the door stood a tall glass display case showing many pairs of eyeglasses and an eye chart hung on one wall. A chair, like one found in a dentist's office, was on the was on the right with all sorts of eye testing equipment hanging over it on jointed metal arms. At the far end of the room, near the windows, stood an oak desk, and behind the desk sat Dr. Amelia Pimlico. She was a heavy-set elderly woman in a white hospital uniform. She looked very cheerful and pleasant. Her gray hair was pulled into a bun, and she wore steel-rimmed spectacles. In one hand, she held a pen, and she seemed to be in the middle of writing something. Good afternoon, young man, said the doctor, smiling. You must be John Dixon. And you're here to have your eyes examined, am I correct? Johnny nodded. He was so jittery, he would have started stammering if he had tried to speak. Dr. Pimlico's smile got broader. She motioned for Johnny to come closer. Awkwardly, he shuffled forward. He noticed an odd collection of things lying in the, on the doctor's desk. A wide roll of adhesive tape, a pair of scissors, a neatly folded white handkerchief, and a hypodermic syringe of some clear fluid. Nervously, Johnny glanced to his left. There was a doorway there, and it probably led to an inner office. Over the doorway hung a dark green curtain. Dr. Pimlico cocked her head to one side. Her smile was still pleasant, but there was a hard glint in her eyes. Johnny was trembling all over by now, and when he opened his mouth to speak, he found that he couldn't. He closed his eyes, and in that instant, he heard the curtain slide back on its rings. Hands grabbed his shoulders from behind. He knew that he was a prisoner. He knew he was doomed. And that's the end of chapter 13.